going on, everybody? It's your boy. We back for Real Housewives of Atlanta. Try to move through this a little bit quickly, more or less the opening part. So you got Kenya and Cynthia catching up, rehashing what has happened. You also got Todd and Peter doing the same exact thing. Peter has uh, his club opening. This is um, going to be opened up in Charlotte. He pretty much has invited everybody from the group except for Cynthia, especially, and, well, Give me a second because I've been trying everything together and this just came back on. My B, it's a lot going on. I've been recording, like game playing everything from my other channel. God, excuse me. But um, his whole thing is he wants Kenya and I believe Matt to like host the uh, opening. And it's one of those where, okay, he needs somebody that, you know, is someone with a big name. One, two, he probably ain't finna pay him. And three, they need something to record so it works in his favor. Okay, you know. But, you know, get some good, some nice people there to, you know, kind of like, you know, hype up the place. It is what it is. The only thing is he did not invite Cynthia. In his mind, this is a good way for me to start over. And it's one thing to still be cool with the guys. That That's one thing. It's another thing to invite the girls, minus Cynthia. Because if you wanted a big name, I'm pretty sure you could have hollered at some people and be like, hey, can you do me a solid? So that's some fuck shit right there. Now, Candy, well, Candy's with Ty. Ty shows her a picture uh, that was on Instagram from a guy named Johnny who used to work with her. And he had his own business and she was putting him on, had him uh, hosting certain things and doing certain things for her so he can up his repertoire, his resume. So with his business, he can get, you know, better uh, gigs and whatnot. You know, her whole thing is, you know, putting other people on. And at the same as that time, you know, when you're putting somebody on, you don't always have to charge, you know, that top dollar that you would to somebody else. But you, you again, you putting somebody else to fuck on. This individual, Shady Candy, talked about some, you know, pretty much her being fake and phony this, that, and third. So we're going to see how that play out later. Okay, shit's starting to get a little bit good. So we got Porsche House her knowing. Only two things I want to mention about that. One, she's going to move back in with her mother because she's pretty much at that point where she has to move out. She has not found another place yet. But again, 45 days is like three weeks. But is it me or if y'all get a chance to watch this back, does it look like the girl showing her the house look like a Nika Boo Boo Kitty from Empire? Or is it just me? I don't know. Um. So now we got the Bear Room Candy Convention. So Candy is staying back in the cut to do that. I didn't mention it earlier. And, you know, she's doing her, you know, little thug this one or whatnot. And, you know, I want to say, you know, shout outs to her and her business team for, hey, capitalizing, you know, on, you know, the whole pretty much making uh, bedroom candy, not just for, you know, heterosexual couples or just for one specific type, but even for, you know, those that they have this one piece for uh, lesbian couples where it hooks into, I believe, the vag of the, um, let me see, the, the giver. I guess, yeah, the giver, and then the penis portion goes into, y'all get what I'm trying to say, damn, okay, like I said, I don't know how all that shit works, but, you know, it's one of those, what kudos to her, one, it's not so far-fetched, whatever it is, we're going, let's come out about candy, but the same as that type of shit, make your money, hell, everybody want love, and everybody, you know, want a little bit of stimulation, so go ahead, do that shit right there, now, Johnny is there, and she decides, to pull him to the side to talk to him because she was like, even though he's fired as a full time employee, I still book him from time to time. And she was like, you know, what's, what's hood, man? His whole thing is with the situation, because we are friends, I felt that you should have pulled me to the rag off. My head gonna look a little mad, but it's okay. But he, he felt like you should have pulled me to the side and talk to me rather than how he got let go, which was uh, Don Juan letting him go. But her whole thing is when it came to business, if something came up for your other business, you put that before my shit. So with that being said, this had nothing to do with a friendship and everything to do with business. So that is why Don Juan fired you. And then, you know, he pretty much, Allude to the fact that she was fake. And here's what threw me. She was like, you can call me a bitch. You can call me a motherfucker. But what I won't let you call me is fake. I was just like, okay. All right. <laughs> I feel it, but I mean, that kind of threw me just a little bit. And she was like, with that being said, I'm going to take my fake money. And you know what? Consider this to be the last paycheck that your ass going to get from me. And, whew, candy went in. 
All right, so Horsha is now moved in with mom, invites Todd over. She has to sneak him upstairs. Now, the whole entire time, I'm saying her thing about, why y'all not in the hotel? Then Chingy featuring uh, Ludacris and uh, Snoop Dogg Holiday and start playing in my head. And, you know, y'all already know how I feel about it. And again, if I haven't already said that, a lot of this shit is just jokes. Okay, so I, I probably should have said that. But for those of y'all who rap with me, y'all know most of this shit shows. I don't give a fuck about most of the motherfuckers. So once the shit go off, I'm on to the very next motherfucking thing. You feel me? But anyway, he even makes a comment as to why the fuck we ain't going to the motherfucking hotel. You know, because he's sitting here lighting, you know, lighting up sage and shit. And they sniggling, you know, lighting up school kids and shit. Who couldn't have did it? So now you got Baba Sheree. She wants to do... uh parkour which is like i know what that is i can never well, one my knees are fucking horrible but i can just never do it that's that's way too much of one fucked up move it's fucking horrible but um johnny morrison aka johnny nitro aka johnny mundo he does parkour and a lot of that he does in his wrestling which is fucking amazing again i just can't fucking do it and she's doing that with uh bob and she reveals to him that hey i have a novel that i'm about to release you know and pretty much it's her memoir slash, you know, official uh, novel all mixed in together so she can add in some extra juicy shit. And mentions that there's a character loosely based on him in there. And he's like, well, I want advanced copy. Plus, you know, you got to remember that you have had other projects that haven't really seen the light of day. And I'm glad he said something because I'm pretty sure more than positive I've said something about her with these fucking adventures and we never saw She by Sheree. And they even brought, and they even, y'all know Bravo is shady as fuck, but they showed a clip of that. And my thing is this, because she works out, because she kept talking about body by Sheree, this and third, I'm pretty sure people would be more uh, inclined to purchase, you know, fitness, like a fitness workout plan from her rap. Well, they might enjoy this book, but now you're going to have people trying to decipher what is and what isn't real. And this will be the perfect thing to bring Nene back in for the very next season. And um, you got Johnny meeting with Fake Tra because, you know, he want to talk about, you know, uh, what his rights are. And it's one of those where if this is truly, truly real, that's some that's that fuck shit where it's like, you know, I fell out with somebody, so I'm going to go to, you know, that person's enemy and befriend them. Like, ooh, but we all know karma is a bitch and a shade. It's her sister. So, John meets with Fakeshire, of course, and he pretty much says that, from what I gather, he wasn't uh, adequately compensated for um, his time with Ken. But from what I'm gathering is that he agreed to a certain amount. And now that the relationship is over, he's upset. And that he's he also made mention of the fact that they were going to go into the restaurant business together. And then she up and decided to do it with Todd several months ago. But if the timeline pans out the way that I think it is, she had already severed ties with him business-wise, except for just doing certain minor events. And this is one of those where, you know, if he signed a fucking contract, I mean, you can fight it, but it really ain't much you can do. And my whole thing is, this, and this is one thing that some people need to um, understand. So, say for instance, if, you know, somebody is a big fucking deal, right? Um, and I don't do hair, but let's just say, for instance, if I did hair. And Candy decides, you know what, you can do, I, I'll let you do my hair. You can sit here and promote me as such. The only thing is, I'm not going to pay you, my remote pauses, I'm not going to pay you full price that I will pay somebody else because the end result is this. You are, I'm already established, you are using, and a lot of this is not said, but it's understood. You're using my name to come up, so I'm not going to sit here and pay you regular price and you finna come up off my name that ain't how the fuck this shit work if that's the case i can go ahead and you know get somebody who already is doing the damn thing so it's one it's a quick quote pro i'm helping you you helping me it is what is the reality is candy don't need the help so if 500 dollars is what you know 
it was, and that you know what I'm saying. Then it is what it is, and why he's sitting here bitching. I guarantee fucking tell you there are some other people where you know what they down on their luck, and if they was offered five hundred dollars, which I'm pretty sure is probably more than that, but if they were offered that to sit here and put this fucking party together, they gonna sit here and they go. They gonna make something out of nothing. They gonna turn that five hundred to you know a couple hundred thousands and whatnot. They gonna sit here and make sure this thing is GTG. Make sure they named in some way, shape, form is plastered on every fucking thing so they can fucking come up. You you feel me? So I mean, like I said, he he just in this motherfucking feelings right now. Now Phaedra says that this is not her area of expertise. I don't know if it is or if it isn't, but she says she's not petty, but she's gonna recommend him to someone that can handle the situation. And Kenya is with uh, Cynthia in Charlotte. And, you know, they get ready to change. Apparently, she gets, you know, some text messages. I don't know how true all this shit is. But she shows him, uh, him shows uh, Cynthia um, shade room clips of Matt and, you know, reads her text messages, which, I mean, her reading it, how legit are these fucking text messages? But apparently, he going ham, starting to hug this down her. Hey, my whole thing is this. You doing way too much. Because she initially told Peter that it's okay if he invites Matt because of the simple fact that, okay, he's still cool with guys that's in the third and then reneged on it. And that apparently is what is sending Matt over the edge. And he's, I guess, starting to her saying, if you show another dude this and the third, man, my whole thing is if, if the shit real, screenshot the shit, print the shit out to the motherfucker court, get a restraining order. A lot of this shit is the shit is easy. You know, I understand when it's matters of the heart. Sometimes, you know, the the hardest thing to do is the right thing, but you just don't do it. But if you really that fucking done with him, there's a way to sit here and go about, you know, get this shit rectified. So, honestly, I think I'm probably done with the Kenya mass situation. I do want to say it seems like everything is picking up. Uh, we even get Marlo back next week, but I'm not going to talk about that. So, just go ahead and wrap this shit up. So, uh... Kenya shows up to the event. Matt is, you know, in the vicinity. Now, they didn't show this, so I don't know if it was recorded or not. Like, we just heard. But we didn't get, like, a close-up, close-up. But apparently, allegedly, he went over to talk to Kenya, stuck his head in the car on the drive, I think, you know, on the driver's side, and say, hey, let me holler at you. And supposedly, allegedly, the uh, driver, I guess, started to roll his neck up in the uh, window, you know, how the thing come up. And, you know, I guess, you know, you know, uh, he, um, Matt gave him the five fucking finger discount. And, uh, you know, asked him what the five finger say to the face and walked off. So Kenya's in her feelings is that the third. So you have Cynthia telling her, you know, I think you better let it go. Just another love, TKO. Matt and Ty go outside and call uh, fucking Matt. They tell his ass the same thing, bro, you need to let it go. Matt tells them, like, well, y'all need to tell her the same thing. Okay, so they gonna let it go. Apparently, allegedly, but not really. So that's all that I got. Hopefully, y'all enjoyed it. Please rate, comment, subscribe, and share. I will see you guys back here yeah, tomorrow for um, Love & Hip Hop New York. Peace.